Hey, ¿qué tal amigos? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with another video this week about some of the things that have caught my attention in both the local and international press about Spain. Some of the main news items that have popped up over the last week or so. And the first thing we're going to look at today is the appointment of Spain's finance minister Luis de Guindos to the number two position in the European Central Bank. He's going to become the vice president of that organization. Uh, of course, the president is Mario Draghi. So that means that there are two people in power from the south of Europe in that organization. And uh, Mr. Guindos was elected as a result of the Irish candidate withdrawing at the last minute. So basically, he won the election to that position without any competition and with the support of the Euro group. There was a small complaint from Italy who said that they didn't want a politician in a role like that. They would have preferred some type of technocrat or bureaucrat in that position and not a politician. But uh, that was the only main complaint. And El País newspaper said here that it was more due to Spain's fantastic economic recovery uh, than anything else. The reason that Luis de Guindos was elected to this position. Now, apparently also uh, one of the reasons he was elected is because Germany is trying to get their candidate into the main position, into the president's position next year. So they will have a member from the south of Europe and a member from the north of Europe in those two key positions. Uh, Draghi, I think his term finishes next year. So the Germans uh, obviously are playing the uh, political puzzle here to get their man into the position, control the Central Bank of Europe, and of course you, uh, you control the monetary policy in this union. So that is the first thing that caught my attention this week. Now the next thing that caught my eye this week was the court appearances of some of the Catalan independence leaders, of course, because of their uh, illegal referendum, let's say, that took place last year. Two or three politicians were scheduled to appear in court this week. One of the higher profile politicians, Marta Rovira, did show up. She was put on a 60 thousand euro bail and I think ordered to appear again in the near future. Uh, the other person that was scheduled to appear, Ana Gabriel from the Coupe, the uh, more radical left wing independence group, she didn't show up. She apparently is in Switzerland. She's gone to Switzerland uh, and uh, decided not to appear in court. She has defied the court summons here, according to the BBC, and uh, she's fled the country to avoid facing trial, according to the Independent. She has said that she wouldn't be able to get a fair trial here in Spain, so she's looked for a country that will protect her rights. She also thinks that she'll be more useful uh, free in Switzerland than behind bars in Spain. And uh, she's also said that she's prepared to seek political asylum should Spain's extradition request be granted. But I think Switzerland has already come out and said that they're not going to, uh, to listen to any extradition requests for her. So again, the Spanish government made to look a little bit ridiculous here with all of these politicians fleeing to other parts of Europe where apparently they're going to be able to operate without the risk of jail. Of course, Mr. Puigdemont in Belgium and now Ms. Gabrielle in Switzerland. Can you get a fair trial in Spain? That is the question. Uh, a lot of the other Catalan politicians are currently being entertained in Spain Spain's penitentiary system and uh, of course these uh, other politicians here don't think that they'll be able to get a fair trial so that's it the separation of powers on display here are you able to get a fair trial in Spain the Catalan independence politicians don't seem to think so so time will tell again uh, what will happen regarding these politicians and the judicial system here in Spain, whether the charges will result in even lengthier jail sentences for some of these people. Now, this leads 
us to the censorship debate here in Spain. A lot of people this week have been questioning whether people have freedom of expression or freedom of speech in Spain, considering the fact that a Spanish artist had his exhibition dropped from a Spain art fair, from a Madrid art fair this week, Santiago Sierra. He had a political prisoners uh, exhibition He had it removed from the art fair. It featured photos of the Catalan political prisoners that are currently in jail or awaiting trial here in Spain. And of course, this created a political debate here this week, whether you are able to express yourself freely from an artistic point of view. Again, there was another case this week of a Spanish rap artist who was sentenced to three years prison for the lyrics of one of his rap songs in which he criticized the monarchy and the political system here in Spain. I think he said that uh, the uh, the people are waiting in the Plaza Mayor with a noose for the king and uh, those uh, words were not taken lightly by the Spanish judicial system and they decided to send him to three years jail, which is a little bit harsh in my opinion because if you compare the lyrics of his song, which I don't think were all that bad, if you compare them to, for example, Eminem's recent song about Donald Trump or Snoop Dogg's recent song about Donald Trump or the fact that uh, Kathy Griffin in the USA held up a, uh, a seven Donald Trump head. I don't think she was sentenced to jail. Maybe she was criticized on social media. Maybe she was criticized in certain parts of the society, but I don't think she was sentenced to jail. And of course, Eminem is a free man, as is Snoop Dogg. But this unfortunate Spanish rap artist is uh, going to go to jail for his lyrics. So freedom of speech on the agenda this week. Are people able to say what they want? And again, there was a book this week that was also taken off the shelves as a result of a judicial request, uh, a book that was talking about the uh, cocaine industry in Galicia and the role of politicians in that industry. I think I think the former mayor of Pontevedra put in a court order to ask for the book to be removed from shelves and of course the justice system upheld that request. Spain has been criticized over the last few years by various uh, freedom of speech groups. I think Amnesty International also questioned Spain this week as well about this gag law that they passed in 2015, which basically severely uh, suppresses a lot of the things that you're able to say in this country. A lot of uh, people have uh, found themselves in hot water over tweets Uh, Other singers have found themselves in hot water about song lyrics again. So really, you have to be careful what you say and do in this country now as a result of that gag law from 2015. And of course, people are questioning the, uh, the democratic values of this particular law. It's also a fact that the Uh, government a couple of years ago wanted to ban memes that featured politicians. Some of the uh, memes that popped up, obviously criticizing the uh, prime minister, other prominent politicians, they wanted to ban memes. Uh, So if you were uh, putting out memes about politicians, you could have also risked jail time. But I don't think that one went through. And we can see here a couple of the uh, memes in question that the uh, the government tried to uh, ban. So, uh, well, that's it. Freedom of expression in Spain in serious doubt at the moment. So be careful what you say or do should you decide to come to this country. And the last thing that caught my attention was the protest this week, the demonstration by thousands and thousands of retired people who took to the streets to protest about the measly increase in their pensions this year. Apparently, there is only going to be a 0.25 increase to pensions. So thousands of retired people, of course, they have time to do it, took to the streets this week to show the government what they think about this increase and basically tell them where to stick it. They're requesting decent 
pensions and uh, increases to pensions uh, rather than the ones that they currently have at the moment. I also read somewhere the other day that uh, pensioners here in Spain live a lot better than people on the minimum wage. So there's also food for thought. But uh, they decided that they needed to take to the streets in order to uh, protest. They managed to shut down one of the main streets in here, the street that has the parliament building on it. They managed to uh, shut that street down with their protest. And there were protests in all of the major cities, Madrid, Barcelona, Pamplona, Bilbao, Seville, etc. All of the uh, main Spanish cities had this protest yesterday or the day before. Not sure exactly when it was. I think it was yesterday, Thursday. And they were screaming out words like uh, thieves, thieves, all politicians are thieves. Of course, again, putting on the agenda this crisis that Spain has at the moment with its pension system because the government is trying to make changes, but they are not popular changes. And of course, pensioners do not want to be hit directly in their hip pocket by these changes. I'm a little bit worried myself. I don't know whether I'm going to have a pension or whether there is going to be a state pension when I retire. And if there is, how much is it going to be? I'm currently paying a lot of money every month for a pension. Uh, unfortunately, the pension system here works, as I explained last week, that the money that I pay now supports the people that are currently retired. But there's no youth in Spain and uh, unemployment is a serious problem and the government has been using the pension savings over the last few years for other things. So we have this crisis at the moment. So we'll see if politicians are worth their salt and they're able to fix the problem. I don't know. I'm not uh, overly confident that they will be able to do it. So I think the only solution for people like me is to save, save, save and uh, try to have some type of self-funded retirement or at least one that uh, can subsidize the measly state pension that I am most likely to get. So that is all that I have to talk about today. Questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. I'll see you in the next video about Spain news. Hasta luego. Mm -hmm.